Hey Toolnuts, Doug and Sean here from Toolnut.com. So today in this video, we're gonna be going over the new Makita Slide Brushless 36 Volt Miter Saw. A lot of adjectives. Yes, that was long, but uh, needed. So Shane will put the model number over here, or, or over here. here, one of the two. So we did a video on this probably almost two months ago on the new Makita LS1019L. Yeah. Miter saw. It's done extremely well. A lot of people were asking immediately, of course, when is the 36 volt version coming out? Boom, look, it's here, guys. It's out. It's out. So we're excited. I'm sure you're very excited. So we will be making a cut with this saw. We didn't do that in the 1019 video. You guys asked, and we're gonna do that. So we'll do that at the end. We're not gonna go over this one in depth, right? Yeah, we're not gonna go over it in depth. The 1019 video has most of the features and benefits this one has. If you wanna watch that video, right. there'll probably be a box like here, or here, over there. Shane will so put it somewhere. Click that, you can watch that video. Or um, just go to our, our YouTube channel, Toolnet TV, look up LS1019L, and it'll take you there, you can watch that video. Um, so obviously, like we said, yeah, we'll cover the new stuff on this one. We'll make some cuts cordless. So two 18 volt batteries, uh, you do need to use them together. If you do not use both are. batteries, if you leave one battery off, you're gonna pull the trigger. It's not going to work. Got to have both batteries in to power it up. Um, and I just hit the microphone and boom, there you go. <laughs> Sorry guys. Uh, so biggest thing with this that I did point out in the other one, we'll go back over it again, dust extraction, where you're going to make a cut. You do have a bottom port on the saw right here. And if we take this fence off, so fence come off on both to bevel, uh, on these, like this one off. Yep, we go. just pop it off like that. Much larger dust port on the bottom here. You have the upper port normal there. They are giving you this hose system, which has an elbow. It also does come with a dust bag. So if you're not gonna use dust extraction, you can put just the, the dust bag up top uh, on the unit here. If you're gonna use dust extraction and you wanna use both the top port and the bottom port together, it comes with this also. So you just plug it in. So obviously you can use a Makita extractor or vacuum with this. There are other brands you can buy too. I did check. It will work with a 27 millimeter hose or a 36 millimeter. From um, Festool. From Festool, right. Uh, actually the 36, now I'm looking here, this elbow configuration is a little bit different from the 1019. So it looks like it's not going to fit on. You only have... We'll make a note in the comments. Yeah, we'll make we'll a note in the it comments. It looks like the 36 millimeter hose, you don't have a lot of space for it. 27 right in the back and you're set so can use it with a dust bag or without like i said you can see sean and i took the fences off it's just a quick twist of a knob in the back comes with left and right out feeds comes with a hold down clamp which i didn't notice this in the last video so i was just messing around with it here it looks like there's a little piece underneath here um, that you can swivel so you can see you can either twist it back and forth to adjust it, which takes some time. There's a little tab under here that moves. And I noticed when I did that and pressed it, that you can actually move this up and down very quickly. You don't have to twist it. So there's like a fine adjustment in a macro. Exactly. So like I said, there's a little tab under here. If I move it that way now, it will not move up and down. You have to twist it up and down all the way. Again, twist the knob back and forth and quick adjust it slide it back then you can dial in and lock it in so quick it's just a quick adjustment you know and this comes out you can use it left or right you know the other quick thing you know on this pebble lock which i went over in the other video but this is an important you know feature for this saw uh the slide mechanism is well, really designed. yeah really really smooth they use good ball bearings what does this do that's to lock it there's a little tab back here, guys, that Sean just messed with right here that flips back. That stops the saw and keeps you more to the fence. Just watch your fingers if you're doing this. I do have a live saw here. 
um, when you're doing these adjustments, either turn the saw off or take a battery out, you know, obviously. So that's just to keep you against the fence, uh, give you more cut. So like I said, in the other video, the 1019L, I did go over the cut capacities. It will be in the product info below uh, on our website. We've got a um, laser, right? Right, so there's a laser built into it. With that said though, um, uh, cut capacities, um, this will cut like a 12 inch uh, blade with a 10 inch blade. So cut capacities, we went over in the other video, they're down below. Like Sean mentioned, there's a laser built into it, switches up here, even on the cordless version. Um, You've got a battery fuel gauge indicator for both batteries. Right. So it'll yep. show you independently. It's right here in the handle, it's kind of hard to see, but you hit the button there, it lights up to tell you, you know, the fuel gauge, like Sean mentioned. Uh, the other thing I noticed when I was putting the blade on this, the corded version, they shipped with a 60 tooth blade. This I noticed is a 40 tooth blade. All right. Uh, shipping with the unit, nice large table surface, you know, the fences um, are high for when you're uh, nesting or standing up your crown or base, you know, molding, whatever you're going to be cutting with this. 12 inch long cut capacity. The miter goes from zero to uh, zero degrees or 60. And the bevel uh, goes to 48 degrees, zero to 48. So uh, pretty cool, great cut capacities. Um, I mean, that's really it. You know, I did take a square, put it against the fence. This one spot on. I did travel the head from the rear to the front with a woodpecker's uh, square. Guys, when you're checking squareness on saws, wh whatever brand it is, framing square is great for doing framing, not for cabinet grade, not for furniture grade. If you want 100% accuracy, you need a good square. Woodpecker's is definitely one of the top on the market out there, and we do sell these also, uh, toolknot.com. So, you know, that's the biggest thing. You know, we'll get calls from time to time where, you know, this isn't square. I took a framing square, put it on the cut afterwards. I've taken multiple framing squares from the sales floor. They're all different. This is the one you want to check it with. All right. Um, so we're going to make some cuts with this through uh, some movie magic. Yeah, we'll be right, right back. We'll be right back, guys. We'll be a piece of board on here and we're going to be making some cuts live. Thanks. So we made our cut in the wood and we're taking our woodpecker square and you can see we got a really nice cut on that board. No spaces, no light showing. So very nice accurate cut and pretty darn good dust extraction uh, compared to previous models and other brands. Comes with a nice blade too, man. There's very little yeah, for, tear out. For a 40 tooth blade, it's actually a pretty there's darn not, clean cut. You know, there's, there's just very a little slate and it just wiped right off there on cool. this piece. So it was a two by 12 cut and uh, that's it guys. I think we covered everything there in the saw and uh, they are available and shipping now from toolnut.com. Again, this is Doug. Sean, have a good weekend because it's Friday in yeah. the world where we're doing this Enjoy. Right